Hi, my name's Rowan, this is Blavinati Central, and today we're going to go over 20 different methods on how to solve a Rubik's Cube. So because I have to go over 20 different methods, that's going to take a long time, so I'm just going to go over one really quick without in-depth explanations. In the top left corner here, there's going to be an algorithm count and a move count, so you can know how many algorithms are in each method and how many moves the method takes. Okay, so the first speed method we have here is called CFOP. So in CFOP, what you do is you build a cross, kind of like a plus shape on the bottom, and then you make these sort of connected pairs and put them in these four slots around here. Once you have solved your final slot, you solve the entire last layer in two looks using 78 different algorithms. CFOP is definitely the most well-researched method because it was invented in like the 1980s or something, pioneered by a nice lady called Jessica Friedrich. Most speed cubers use CFOP today to solve a Rubik's Cube. Number two is the ZZ method. So in ZZ, or ZZ if you're Canadian, the first step is to orient all the edges. And if you don't know what that means, I'm not going to explain it, but you can look up a tutorial. Basically, it makes solving the cube easier. After orienting the edges, you want to solve the DF and DB edges, also called a line. So EO edge orientation plus this line here. So this piece and this piece. Now you solve the first two layers using only R, U, and L moves. Then as you complete your final little pair here, you solve the entire last layer using one of 493 algorithms that I don't know. The ZZ method is probably mostly well known for how many variants it has. So there's like 50 different variations of ZZ method you could use to solve a cube. Number three is the ZB method. Now what ZB is, is it's very much like a combination of the first method, CFOP, and the second method, ZZ, where you solve kind of the first two layers, CFOP style, but then for the last pair, as you're solving the pair, you make sure to orient the edges at the same time. By learning a lot of algorithms, you can orient the edges at the same time as making this pair. And then once you insert the final pair, you're just left with ZBLL. Uh, one person I know who uses ZB is Anthony Brooks, who has competed in a few competitions in Oregon. Number four is the Roux method. Now, the Roux method is very cool because it focuses on block building. If you've never done block building before, I recommend trying it. It's really fun. Basically, in Roux, you make a block on the left side of the cube, followed by a block on the right side of the cube. Then in one algorithm, you solve the corners on top, and then you do a bunch of stuff where you solve the edges. So yeah, that's how you do the Roux method. And Roux was invented in 2003 by a dude named Gilles Roux. Perfect. Number five is Petrus. You may not have heard about Petrus before because, I mean, no one really uses it. You build, you block build this like two by two cube here, and then you rotate and then you expand the cube into like a into a rectangle but this is correct i just messed up after you have this like big rectangle thing all you have to do is orient the edges and then from here you can finish it off um kind of zz style and you can use um zbll again for the last layer which is 493 algorithms but no one uses petrus anymore it's garbage Number six is CFCE. Now, CFCE is basically the same start as CFOP, where you build a cross and then you solve uh, F2L pairs. But CFCE has a different approach to last layer. In normal CFOP, you orient all the pieces and then permute them. So you flip them the right way and then you put them in their spots. But in CFCE, this two look last layer is broken down differently, where the first look solves just the corners right? And then the second look solves all the edges in one algorithm. So almost no one uses this because the algorithms for solving the last um, edges are like kind of weird and bad. Number seven is PCMS. PCMS stands for pillars, corners, middle slice, S slice. So the first step of PCMS is pillars. And what that means is it's really just CFOP style F2L pairs except you don't have to worry about the cross, so there's a lot more freedom involved and a lower move count in making those pairs. And once you've solved all of the CFOP style pairs here, you go on to solve the corners. Then you solve the M slice using M and U moves. 
And once you've solved the M slice, you then rotate and solve the S slice. Fun fact, one time I decided to use PCMS for a solve in a competition. Uh, you can check that video out up there. It's pretty cool. Number eight is Waterman. So Waterman is kind of a block building corner first hybrid. The first step of Waterman is to build a layer except for one edge. Then you'd flip the cube over and solve the corners using one algorithm. Then there's a bunch of different ways to do this, but basically you solve like some edges on the right side of the cube, once you've solved the entire left side of the cube, um, you find the piece that needs to go here, and you do an algorithm of like 300, I don't know, that solves this piece and orients the M slice. So after the algorithm, the cube will look like, the cube will look like this. So basically, then you just readjust that, and then you uh, solve the M slice. Number nine is the LMCF method. Now LMCF stands for Low Move Count Corners First and was invented, I believe, in 2018 by Eric Fatah. LMCF method is super unique because it's like one of the only corners first method that's good. The other really unique thing about LMCF is that almost all of the steps are algorithmic. There's only one intuitive step and that's at the very end. The first step of LMCF is obviously to solve all of the corners on your cube. Once your corners are solved, you're supposed to solve a few, like one or two edges of the top side while scanning the E layer for pairs. The next step is called E2L, which stands for edges of the two layers. And it's kind of like F2L, but edges only, and it's super whack and very cool. So the goal of E2L is to solve a total of six edges across the right and left side. So here I've solved all four on the right and two on the left. And basically, once you've solved six total edges, you do one algorithm and that turns the cube from this state into this state where you have all the edges oriented and all you have to do is do a few trivial moves to solve the M slice. And the final one in the speed methods category is Zebru or ZBRU. Now obviously Zebru is a combination of ZB and RU. <laughs> the first step of Zebru is you solve a normal first block. Then the second step is to solve your second block, also just like RU, no special tricks. But instead of finishing RU style, you first orient all of the edges and solve the two bottom pieces at the same time. So something like that. Now you're just left with ZBLL to finish the entire cube. Okay, section two is about experimental methods. Now these experimental methods, some of them are designed for speed, but no one uses them, or they haven't been fully developed or stuff like that. Let's meet our experimental methods. So the first experimental method is called water rule. Remember, remember the Waterman method from earlier in this video? And remember the Rue method? Well, well, what if you just... First step in Water Rue, build first block like standard Rue. The second step is to build just the square of your second block, so don't finish it off the last pair and everything. Second, you just insert the next corner in any position, doesn't matter. Once this is inserted, you'll use TCMLL algorithms. Now TCMLL stands for Twisted CMLL, so it's basically CMLL, but like there's three, which would never happen normally. So there's algorithms for this. After you've done those algorithms, you're left with seven edges, the normal Rue six ones, plus this. So there's like 300-ish algorithms, if I remember correctly. You basically set it up into a case, you know, so maybe you learned a set where the one on the left is solved, and then you recognize the case, perform an algorithm that reduces the cube from this state to this state. So we've seen this state before, this is just, um, all you need to solve is the M slice, so very easy. So that's water roux. Similar to water roux, we have water ZZ. Water ZZ starts kind of like Petrus, but with edge orientation, which is how ZZ starts. So the first step is obviously to orient all the edges and solve a sort of Petrus 2x2x2 two by two by two block in the uh, back left. The second step is you solve kind of this back square here, just like in Water Roux, actually. 
So now you have edge orientation done and this big rectangle thing in the back. Then you just solve this F2L pair. After you solve this pair here, there's one algorithm from here to solve all of the corners in one look, which is pretty insane. It's a lot of algorithms. So after that step, the cube would, would go from this to this. So all the corners just get solved. And then after that, you just have last six edges, which is this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So three of mine happen to be already solved. That's pretty cool. I can just kind of like, I don't know, that one was easy, but. So that's water ZZ. Hey, do you guys know what time it is? You don't? It's ribbon time. What is ribbon method? Well, ribbon method is the third on our list. Ribbon method basically starts out the same way as CFOP, except you solve a ribbon. So what a ribbon is, is the normal cross plus one edge. After that, you kind of just solve CFOP F2L, kind of like normal. After the F2L is finished, the cube looks like this, and you're just missing this corner here. Now you use one of 173 algorithms to orient the entire last layer and this corner. So the edges don't have to be oriented, they could have been like this, even like some OLLs that don't exist, like this one. After you do those 173 algorithms, however, you're left with either TTLL, which is basically PLL plus this corner, or normal PLL if this corner happens to get solved, and you're just left with PLL. That's ribbon. It's cool because you build a ribbon. I don't know, cool ribbons. Next up in the cubing hut, it's shadow slice snow columns, or SSC for short, but shadow slice snow columns just sound really cool. Step one, orient the edges and solve these two pieces. After that, you solve this back edge piece, so that, and then I'm just gonna show you the beginner's method here because that's the one that I know. But you insert oriented corners into the bottom layer to make the, the bottom layer have oriented corners. But before inserting the final piece here, you make like a pseudo F2L pair and you use winter variation algorithms that I don't know that you insert the pseudo pair while orienting the corners. So after this, um, the belt edges are solved and all the corners and edges are oriented. Finally, you just like separate the corners and then solve the corners using square one algorithms. But once the corners are solved, they don't have to be like solved solved, but once they are solved, all you gotta do is make uh, rue blocks. So like that, except these are off by some. And then you can just rue around and then it's great. Shadow slice snow columns, everyone. Number five is heist. So heist, not to be confused with a heist, like a bank robbery, is supposedly one of the first zero algorithm methods. How that works is essentially you solve an edge and then you block build these like squares that are off by 90 degrees. I don't know. I'll show you once I build one. So kind of like this. So after you put an edge, you build that, but you put it there. So it's like a Petrus block, but it's off by one and then you rotate and then build another one. And then the next one you build is also off by one. So like all of it is just slightly off and it's cool, I guess. And then you just like orient the edges and then kind of like try and fix all the blocks. And then your cube is in this state, which I mean, you could just insert that and use algorithms, except in this zero algorithm method, you're supposed to intuitively solve all of the edges and two corners at the same time, leaving you with a simple three corner commutator. So if any of that sounded confusing to you, um, yeah. Number six is really awesome. I'm sure we've all accidentally invented this while messing around with the cube. It's basically belt method. That's right. In belt method, the first step is you solve the belt. So that's just all the middle E layer edges, I guess. The cube will look like this, fully solved belt. Now there's so many different variants, I'm just gonna explain one of them. And the variant that I'm going to explain is one where you separate the pieces into their layers using R2 moves. You're basically just connecting up a bunch of yellow pieces and inserting them into the bottom. And then once everything's separated, you basically just have OLL and PLL, except this can happen and it's 
like you have to learn corner parody and there's parody but like after you do the parody and look there's more parody here um just do that and then i just have a u perm and then rotate and then uh normal oll and pll i guess so yeah that's belt method there's many different ways to do that but it's really fun and number seven is a method that i invented that's right yours truly blobinati central invented this method i have a video on it in my channel link in description from when i proposed it but basically it's pdqf method now pdqf stands for pseudo domino quadrangular francisco it's <laughs> it's pretty wacky so the first step is you orient all of the edges after you do that, you build a pseudo-rectangle on the bottom. So this is a pseudo-square, yeah. Pseudo-rectangle would kind of be like this. Pseudo-rectangle, okay, yes? Or you make a pseudo-back square here. So everything's pseudo in this method, which is why I really enjoyed it. After you make that pseudo-square, you then make the pseudo-pair, and then you do a uh, winter variation, which is basically just where you insert this pair while doing algorithms that at the same time would orient those corners. After that, you can kind of see this double PLL sort of weird thing. So here we have an E perm, except like these two are swapped. So you can either learn another like 22 algorithms to do parity basically, PLL with parity at the same time, or you could just do parity PLL, rotate, PLL again. Number eight, tripod method. Tripod starts out the same exact way as Petrus, where you build a two by two by two block, something like this. But now, instead of filling out the rest of the first two layers and doing last layer, you attach three squares to this. So squares are like this. So one here, one here, and one here. So we took our original cube and we put a square here, square here, and a square here, and now it's this. This is also called a tripod because it's basically a square with three legs, I guess, so it's a tripod. The final step is to somehow solve the last F2L pair while not ruining your square, so... Uh... Something like that, I guess? <laughs> and then, from here, you get a one-look last layer because you already have three pieces solved in only like 58 algorithms, if I remember correctly. So it would look like this. Solved cube. Why why would I why do I why did I even explain what a solved cube is gonna look like? I don't know. In number nine, we have 42 methods. So 42 is called 42 because there's 42 algorithms and it averages 42 moves. So the first step of 42 is you build 42 blocks. Nope. <laughs> you only build a block. So you build a block. Next step is you build this square down here. Except instead of just inserting the next corner, you turn it once for fun, I guess, I don't know, and then solve that corner. But you're not, this isn't supposed to be solved. And then it's basically the same ending as Rue. You recognize CMLL, which is significantly more difficult now that it's like this. So let's try and work through it together. So opposite of white and blue is gonna be the yellow and blue pieces. So this is a real yellow and blue piece. And this is the real yellow and blue piece. So these are the real corners. Next, on the bottom, we have orange here on this side. The opposite of that is gonna be red. So we want red to be on top on this side. So we have a pie case. That's right, this isn't a U case. This is a pie case. These two are oriented and these two aren't. I don't know which one, so I'm just gonna do the standard pie algorithm. And, ooh, that was almost correct. These two just need to swap. And then there's many ways to do this next part. You can just like fix it and then do normal roux. And the final experimental method is the zipper method. Zipper was created a few months after ribbon method was created and by the same person too. Remember how with ribbon method, you solve the cross plus one edge? In zipper, you solve the cross plus one corner, also called fish. So that's just what step one is. Step two is finish all three of the F2L pairs like normal, regular F2L. Then you put the unsolved edge here and do OLLCP. Basically orients all the pieces and solves the corners. 
After those algorithms, the cube would look like this. So you just have five pieces. So it's basically ribbon, but different, okay? So you do some algorithms, I guess, and then zipper.